Hello Braunschweig, here is Gregor and uh, I'm the director of Stories from the Chestnut Woods. Uh, I hope that the film will be enjoyable and that uh, you will be able to focus on the atmosphere and the images uh, more than on the story because this film was always thought as um, a film that doesn't speak really with human psychology but mostly with the atmosphere of the places where everything takes part. Um, it's also a film that never wanted to be a historical reconstruction but uh, more like, um, let's say, a parable or a sad fairy tale for adults uh, because we believe that uh, by doing that we can capture better um, the soul of these places and we can speak about uh, these problems that happen all around the world all the time not only uh, in this uh, moment of history where this film takes place. Uh, ten, ten years ago or even more I started a, a project which was to um, research all the autochthonous and old fruit varieties from the region where I grew up because they were uh, very important culturally. I mean, this was a region that uh, lived in the past from fruits and wine, uh, but uh, wine kind of was more popularized in the last uh, 30, 20 years, uh, whereas fruits were kind of forgotten. And what was interesting that there was a whole culture connected to the fruits because the conditions of the fruit growing were so good, so good that um, uh, people really like um, put special attention to it and uh, I had this luck that I could travel uh, all this, to all these small villages that were still inhabited by one, two, maybe three people uh, elderly people and they would uh, always open their doors to me and uh, start speaking about uh, the fruits their experience with the fruits, the anecdotes but also uh, all the other stories that were connected with uh, the land. So basically I didn't hear just stories about the fruits, but also about uh, fairy tales, historic uh, things and moments from everyday life that uh, then actually ended up in the film Stories from the Chestnut Woods. The second question is a very interesting question. So um, how we tried to convey um, the emotion in this film was a very particular, I think, process because uh, when we started to work on it uh, with Marina Gumzi, who co-wrote the film and produced it, uh, we knew uh, that we don't want to make a historical reconstruction. We knew that uh, we don't want to talk about uh, facts, but that we want to talk about this collective myth and that we want to talk about how um, when a society starts to break down, starts to break up uh, in pieces, when social uh, conditions are not good anymore, where young, when young people want to emigrate, uh, what happens? It happens that there is this strange feeling in the air and uh, this was actually something we wanted to talk about. So uh, we wanted to talk about something that you cannot point out um, with the finger, but it's omnipresent. It's this strange feeling of uh, uh, that life is not possible in a place anymore. And uh, this was very um, interesting because these places are uh, aesthetically beautiful and naturally beautiful. So for me, it was always... Uh, uh, very interesting that these places, uh, even though they are so beautiful, they are completely abandoned. So there was something dark, like uh, when I spoke to uh, the local people that uh, remembered the times after the Second World War, they would say to me, oh, it was like a dark, dark cloud that came over and uh, everything went wrong, you know. So they couldn't explain it in uh, uh, scientific terms. 
and or historical terms, of course, because they looked at it emotionally. But this was exactly what we wanted to speak about in the film, so that sometimes um, the decay of a society is perceived in the air, you know, and that um, we wanted to may make a film that actually has all this complexity inside, but that doesn't develop horizontally but vertically, meaning that every detail that we shoot is the same of the same importance as uh, maybe the main actor, uh, because we we thought that uh, these uh, personalities, these characters, were just um, pieces in the whole mosaic, which was this world that uh, was kind of uh, saying goodbye, no? And um, yes, that was actually our our first intent, and uh, uh, we really tried because it's not easy. Uh, in in a cinema, in a film, to do uh, something that uh, is actually different from the classic logic or the classic narrative techniques that cinema today, especially today, uses most of the time because we are used to watching mostly psychological uh, co conflicts between humans. So making a film that doesn't take psychology in this sense as uh, his main interest but is more interested in the air in the space in the uh, image and sound uh, how can you manage to make still a, a watchable movie or something that speaks to people that is not hermetic so this was our main let's say task and quest when we were doing the film and uh, hopefully we managed uh, but of course it was not easy <laughs> Yes, and the third question is basically speaks about the same thing. So for us it was um, very important how the film would look because we had the feeling that it's the only way that we can convey this atmosphere. So the form was uh, the content, no? The Inhalt, how you would say in Germany. Uh, the form was the Inhalt. We cannot separate that, you know. And... Um, uh, so for us it was necessary to shoot on film because we've seen films that uh, were kind of fairy tales or something that happened in the past and because they were not shot on film but in digital uh, and they were not maybe well processed uh, they just lost this little uh, something that uh, this mystery that, uh, that the film can give you this softness, these colors, these pastel colors so for us, shooting on film was something very clear from the start. And um, uh, I guess it was a mixture of elements, of cinematic elements that uh, uh, we had to take in account. One thing was, of course, the language, because in this region, um, actually this was a, you can call it a Slovenian uh, ethnicity, so... Slovenian minority living in Italy for a very long time, for more than 130 years. So uh, they didn't have Slovenian schools. They didn't learn Slovenian language uh, in the schools. So they were speaking a very old dialect, but when they were speaking or writing, they were speaking and writing in Italian. So it was a very uh, mixed, strange uh, thing that actually we thought we cannot really explain in the film because it's too complex, you would need a documentary to explain just this. Uh, but we still wanted that you kind of feel it, that you that you hear it, that there is this kind of schizophrenia in the different languages. And uh, so we, we really tried to, if it was possible, if the actors were, were uh, from there, I mean the extras, uh, that they would speak their dialect, which is a dialect that is dying out, because maybe now a thousand people still speak it, and it's very, very... Uh, the, the young people don't speak it anymore so it's, it was also very important for us to to have um, this, let's say um, ethnographic uh, or ethnologic te uh, uh, testimonies of wow, how this little community was living so it was very important for us that we shoot it there, that uh, uh, we rebuild the houses like they were inside, that we use the objects and of course that we can hear the songs and the language of these people uh, if it's still possible. And thanks God it was still possible. 
uh, and uh, I'm very happy that the people from the place that are still alive were um, able to help us and were prepared, prepared to share this adventure with us. Yes, the fourth question is again a bit speaking about the same thing. So when you decide to make a film that will not speak through, uh, through let's say, classic uh, psychology, uh, but through, through the space, through the images, um, you have to, to take in account everything that the camera sees. So we couldn't, uh, this is really not a documentary, of course, it's also a fairy tale, but I mean, everything had to be fabricated, every had, everything t had to be uh, done uh, from scratch, which with the small budget that we had was extremely difficult. And uh, we are very happy that we had a team of young people that were prepared to work for this small salary, but I think they all uh, made um, their best work, uh, in their careers until now, if you're speaking about Ferran that did photography or the lights um, or uh, the costume designer Katarina Jokwer and Matea Fait or the set designer uh, Giovanna Ciriani, they did, they did uh, a very, very big job, I think, for the small budget that we had because the film looks uh, much, more, much, much more expensive than it was. And uh, we've been uh, with Marina very ambitious from the start, uh, I guess overly ambitious. So, uh, uh, but why? Just because we thought that the only thing that can speak uh, to the audience in a particular way, in a specific way, was this pe peculiar atmosphere that this place had and we wanted to convey it with the cinema tools. So um, we had to wait for the right light outside, we had to wait for the right season, we had to uh, use color in the set design, how we saw it, but, uh, you know, always enhance it a bit to make it a slight caricature uh, because it was still a fairy tale. So um, it was a mixture of all these uh, layers that, uh, of course, also the actors, uh, how, how we tried to convey this slight caricature in the characters, so it was, um, it was, I guess, a, a teamwork and um, a process that was very long because we we started shooting in uh, 2016, I think, and the film was finished in 2019. So it was a very, very uh, long process because uh, the finances that we had were were not enough to to pay a crew for a longer period of time and there was lots of things that we had to do ourselves. I had to shoot a lot of scenes myself um, in different weather conditions and so on. So it was, uh, it was a very, 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 very uh, difficult film to be done. Yes, and uh, and also the fifth question uh, is speaking about the same thing. So when you would go there now, you would re in this uh, valley, which is called uh, Valle del Natizone, or Benicia in Slovenian, near uh, Cividale, so it's Friul region. And um, if you would go there now, you would actually see that we um, had to do everything, meaning we shot everything there, but we had to... Uh, construct the houses inside anew, repaint them, because what you see today is just ruins, you know. It's ruins of something that was alive. So since we were speaking about another time, we had actually to rebuild everything. And uh, there is very few images that actually were shot uh, in, 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 let's say, that, that have houses, that have villages, that, that were shot with think how things are there. Um, most of the, all the interiors had to be, uh, let's say, refreshed. Uh, they are done in the real houses, in the real small houses, but we had to uh, rebuild everything and uh, reinvent this life because now today, unfortunately, this life is gone. It's uh, when you come there, you don't see it anymore. So I hope I answered uh, the majority of questions and I hope you could enjoy the film um, and uh, I'm sorry I'm not there uh, I lived in Berlin for eight years so uh, 
this film is also a bit German because the uh, Deutsche Film und Fernseh Academy helped with uh, the grading of the film. And uh, I, I hope uh, that uh, also in Germany the film will be uh, seen and uh, uh, enjoyed like it was in other countries of the world. And uh, I, uh, I wish you a good, good uh, screening or a uh, good evening if you saw the film. And uh, hopefully the images will haunt you even in the next days. Thank you very much. <laughs>